Good afternoon, and welcome to St. Joseph of the Lakes on this Most Holy Trinity Sunday. My name is Roxanne, and your presider will be Father Mike Anderson. Your announcements today are as follows. The Monday evening prayer and conversation Zoom meeting with De Deacon Tom Conkle and Director of Pastoral, Pastoral Care, Barb Ushold Anderson, will continue Monday, June 8th at 6.30 p.m. Please contact Barb Ushold Anderson via email for the Zoom link. Thank you, parishioners, for your ongoing financial support these past months. The Finance Council wants to share that while collections are down from our budgeted amount, our spending is also being carefully monitored, and we should be in good position at the end of June, which is the end of fiscal year. Keep up the great work. Every gift, no matter the size, is appreciated, and again, thank you. St. Joe's will hold its festival silent auction online this year. We are ready to start preparations. Please help us by donating new individual items or contents for a basket. Donations may be dropped off at the parish office. The gospel today is sometimes called the gospel in miniature because it is so concisely sums up the gospel message. In even more condensed form, God loved, God gave. It is a paradigm for stewardship. We give because we love. At this time, I would like you to please stand to begin our Mass. Thank you for wearing your masks. The protocol calls us as the presider not to wear a mask during mass. For me, so more of a human face of Jesus. So I'm going to take my mask off, but I'm really appreciating you wearing yours. You'll notice I'm wearing it before and I'll be wearing it afterwards, but during mass it won't be on. And we're all learning new things today, so be patient with us. Not quite sure how it's all going to work. I think our ushers are kind of getting things together pretty well, and I, I think our next big confusion will be really at the end of Mass, at communion time, and I'll talk about that as we get closer to that. Now let's stand. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
Brothers and sisters, let's open our hearts to God's grace and ask him now to forgive our sin. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. God, our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed him before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. 
This is indeed a stiff-necked people, yet pardon our weakness and sins and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord. Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice. Mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Alleluia. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. To God who is, who was, and who is to come. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned. But whoever does not believe has already been condemned 
because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Our journey of faith as a community really begins with Abraham. And although we don't understand how Abraham perceived God, but it's told to us in the stories of Abraham that he talked as a friend face to face with God. And towards the end of Abraham's time, God has a conversation with Abraham telling him, that your descendants are going to go into slavery for 400 years. And it happens. They're, They're moved into a slavery to Egypt. And they perceive the way the the Egyptians honor their gods. And they perceive the great power of those gods. And over the course of those 400 years, that familiarity of knowing God as a friend who I can talk to face to face fades. And after those 400 years, God calls forth Moses. Says, Moses, you're going to be the one who rescues my people. You're going to lead them out of their slavery into the land I promised 400 years ago. But God does it through mighty deeds. You have the plagues in which these massive overturns of society happen, but they're always answered by the priests of the Egyptian gods. So over and over again, nine different times, God does something mighty and terrible and powerful, and yet the Egyptian priests are able to match it. Finally, on the Passover, God tells Moses to have the people each procure a lamb, to slay that lamb and to take part of its blood and rub it on the lintels of the doors. And when the angel of death passes by, he'll see the blood of the lamb. And anybody in those houses will be spared, but every firstborn of the Egyptians will be killed. And in a single night, it passes that way, and finally, Pharaoh says to Moses, take your people and leave. As they finally get to their, across the Red Sea to a safe place, God is going to reveal himself to the people. But he reveals himself, not as we hear today in that first reading to Moses, his first revelation is the ground begins to tremble, they hear thunder, they see lightning, there's sounds of horns, and all the people fall on their face and they say, Moses, you go talk to him for us. And from that point on, we didn't know God as one who could be a companion. God was mighty, and he had his spokespeople, and if you could win his favor through enough sacrifices, God might do something for you. But we had no connection at all as a whole people. It comes to this point almost 2,000 years after that that Jesus appears. And he begins telling people really strange stuff. He says, when you see me, you see the Father. When you hear me speak, you hear the Father speak. And we can communicate with each other. God moves into the human race so that we could know him as Abraham knew him as a friend and a companion, not as some mighty being way out there somewhere, but truly as friend. And we hear Jesus speak to Nicodemus today saying, 
God so loves the world that he wants the world to have eternal life. But there's one catch. You've got to believe who I am. Because it's going to be through Jesus that the salvation of God will be manifested. If you can't believe something so unbelievable, this salvation is going to pass you by. And it's a great struggle for the Jewish people who had really lost a connection. It takes simple people like the apostles, fishermen, who might not be great theologians and might not have thought very deeply about anything, who can actually make the connection as they watch Jesus do miracles. Jesus touching a sick person and healing them. Jesus touching a dead person and raising them up. Jesus curing speech impediments. Jesus unleashing people from the slavery of leprosy. And over and over again, even as they watch it, the apostles even struggle with thinking that this truly is God walking on earth. This is a great man. God's using him to do some great stuff, but is it really? And it really takes until Pentecost before finally for the apostles the great revelation takes hold. And you and I are inheritors of the great revelation. And we still sometimes get ourselves messed up. Part of our customs as we genuflect to the tabernacle, as we ask saints to intercede for us, as we look to anybody other than Jesus himself to bring us salvation, we can get confused into thinking maybe somebody else is closer. Maybe Mary, his mother. It's got a better take on the relationship than anything you and I can possibly have. And that would be a false thought. Yes, Mary does intercede for us and her intercession is important, but it's not because Jesus doesn't pay attention to me or to you, because he does. And he's seeking each day that we allow him to be a companion, not with a bunch of rote prayers hoping that somehow if we say enough of them and we do them regularly, finally he'll see how holy we are. He knows us in our troubles. He knows us in our brokenness. He walks with us in that brokenness. And he wants us to come to him even as our troubles bring us problems and look to him on that cross, understanding this is our companion who's as broken in his way through his cross as we are through our brokenness. This is what God wanted to reveal, the depth of his relationship with his creation. Not some stranger, but in fact, people who receive his spirit. So it's not only receiving the body and blood of Jesus, we have God dwelling within us. So that each of us can continue to carry out that same imagery that God is with us. Not far, far away, but here with us wanting now, as he did with Abraham, to be our faithful companion in our journey of life. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, for all ages, God from God, light from light, 
true God from true God with the Father he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man for our sake who was crucified under Pontius Pilate he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> Calling to mind the needs of this world, we place our prayers before the Most Holy Trinity, trusting in our God who is merciful and gracious. For all the members of the Universal Church, through the sharing of gifts and respect for diversity, may we grow in unity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a legal system which results in true justice for all, regardless of race, sex, socioeconomic, or immigration status, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing in our communities, following the brutal acts of violence and vandalism that took place over the last two weeks, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered at this table to worship the living God, and for those who worship from home, May the grace which we will share together as the body of Christ lead us to be more conscious in serving our neighbors in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our graduates who were denied of their usual rites of passion because of the current pandemic, we invite those graduates to now receive our prayers and blessing. God of our beginnings, we thank you for the gift of the lives of our graduates for their excitement, their awesome wonder and curiosity, and their encouraging words. Our graduates' contributions have blessed and challenged those around them, and we have become richer. As they step forward into the world that awaits, take away their, heart, their fears and fill them with the full knowledge of your divine presence. Strengthen the resolve to walk in the footsteps of Jesus as modern-day disciples in a world that is so in need of them. Guide their feet as they move through life, protecting them from the pitfalls of darkness while they help to lead future generations into the warmth and promise of your light. We ask this blessing upon our graduates in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's be seated. Yes. Shelter me, the way ahead is 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. <clears throat> Sanctified by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make, us of, it, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not a, sing, not a unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their e equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day as with one voice they acclaim, Holy, Holy. Hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time, he was betrayed and entered willing and willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks for held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially Eugene Keeley, for whom we offer this Mass, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let's stand. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grace is to grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of our Lord Jesus be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb, Lord. Christ. The body of Christ. Immediately following the blessing, the ushers, or whoever we call them, the welcoming ministers, but they're going to dismiss you from your pews. We invite you to go to the outside and to the back aisle. You'll see spacing steps. So 
So we ask that you kind of keep that six foot distance. And as you leave, it'll take you to where our communion ministers are. And you can receive communion. And then just keep going. You can have your quiet time in your car. Let us pray. May receiving the sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal Holy Trinity in undivided unity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Come, O God of all the earth, come to us, O righteous one. Come and bring your love to birth in the glory of your Son. Sing out, earth and skies, sing of the God who loves you. Raise your joyful cries to the life around you. Come, O God of wind and flame, fill the earth with righteousness. Teach us all to sing your name, may our lives your love confess. Sing out earth and skies, sing of the God who loves you. Raise your joyful cries, dance to the life around you. Come, O oh justice, come, O oh peace, come and shape our hearts anew. Come and make oppression cease, bring us all to life in you. Sing out earth and skies, sing of the God who loves you. Raise your joyful cries, dance to the life around you. Sing out earth and skies, sing of the God who loves you. Raise your joyful cries, dance to the life around you.